Well, good morning. Welcome to Hawkinsville, First United Methodist Church. It's great to see you all here on this Mother's Day. I want to wish all of our mothers a happy Mother's Day today. We celebrate you and we honor you and we thank you for all that you have done for us. So we hope that you have a wonderful Mother's Day. It's also a wonderful day to worship together. And we're glad that you are all here with us today. Uh, worship is a time where we give ourselves to God and where God uh, gives us his presence and his love. So we are so thankful that we get to be together on this day and we get to celebrate Holy Communion today. And it's going to be a good day. Uh, just a few announcements I want to go over. The men's coffee and devotional group continues to meet uh, every Monday at 7 a.m. in the social hall. We hope that all men will be a part of that. Also, VBS is right around the corner, and in your bulletin, you'll see a sign-up sheet if you want to sign up your child for Vacation Bible School, or if you know somebody that you want to bring to VBS, if you'll uh, make sure to sign up for that, it'll be a great week. And we are also in need of volunteers, so if you would like to help out with Vacation Bible School, you can see more information there in your bulletin. There's also going to be a quick uh, meeting of the Nominations Committee next Sunday, uh, March, May 21st at 10 a.m. We invite all of the Nomination Committee members to be a part of that. And uh, now I'm going to invite Ms. Carol Cannon is going to come and bring an announcement about Wednesday night. Hello to everyone. On Wednesday night, we're going to celebrate Kick, which is Kids in Christ's Kingdom. Uh, we started looking at when Kick began, and we think it began in 2000, the year 2000, and it was Agnes McKinney. I don't know if you all remember, Agnes McKinney was our youth and children's coordinator, I believe. Then along came Kara Turk in 2003, and she carried Kick and built it up and built it up and built it up until she left in 2017. And then Nicole Lawson came on, and she did it for a couple of years. And then they all left us, and Linda Williams and I took it over, and we've tried to keep it going from there. But we want to celebrate Kick. And as I look out here, I see several people who are now grown up who grew up in Kick, like Caroline and Rosemary. Bryn, did you go to Kick? See, there are all these, and now Brent has a little baby. So we have so many people that have been, uh, outreach of Kick has touched their lives. And we want to celebrate that this uh, Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. We're going to have supper down at Cochran Hall. So you can see the tables that are, um, are board bought for us. And uh, we're going to play some games and have some fun. And I hope that everybody will fill out a blue card or either call the church office and say that you want to come and how many were coming. We hope to see you all there. The whole church is invited, and we just want to celebrate Kick and all of those who have helped make it a success. Thank you. For another announcement, I want to invite uh, Rosemary Jump and Caroline Peavy to come forward and uh, share a little bit about the mission trip they're going to be going on this summer. So I said at 9 o'clock, we're going on another mission trip again. <laughs> I feel like we do this very often at this point. Um, but I just wanted to tell you guys, if you have us on Facebook, you've probably already seen um, but we are going to Uganda in 37 days, I believe is what I counted a little while ago. So 37 days, we're going to be leaving for a trip um, to Uganda. But it's actually, it's not my connection. Rosemary has this connection, so I'm going to let you, her tell a little bit about it. Um, so my husband's family has been going to Uganda for several years now. Um, I've seen their heart for the people there and the work they do. Um, and I've wanted to go for a while. Um, Joe's mom is Stone. Um, was very special to me and her love for God and his people um, were very evident. Um, oh my gosh. It's a Mother's Day, so. <laughs> you got it. It's okay. Anyway, Miss Stone, Joe's mother, was very special to Rosemary, and she did pass away from COVID in 21. And this was a mission that was very um, important to her, and they did go several years. And so this is going to be not just a special trip to do missions, but also to see a place that was very special to Miss Dawn. 
Um, so we, we did want to um, let the church know we are taking up uh, fundraising money. If you do feel led to donate, we would love to talk to you after church if you feel led to do that. But of course, um, most importantly, we would love uh, your prayers. We would appreciate you to be in prayer uh, for our trip as we leave. We leave June 20th and we'll be gone through July 5th. So another thing I said, we need to, um, we need to be in prayer this Mother's Day because uh, we're, we're having my parents have to be okay with us going on yet another mission trip again. So, but anyway, I do um, appreciate you guys, and we just wanted to let you know of another missions opportunity that, um, that we're going to be able to go and serve on. So thank you all so much. I invite you to join me on page 368 if you care to use your hymnal. My hope is built on nothing less. We'll stand together and sing the first, third, and fourth verses as we stand together. I invite you to join me in this historic affirmation of the Christian faith found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
As we go into our prayer time this morning, I want to ask you to please be in prayer for Miss Susan Hill and her family and the loss of her father, uh, Mr. Tommy Hill, yesterday. Please be in prayer for them. Uh, also ask your prayers for Miss uh, Kay Connell as a member of our church, and she is dealing with complications from her back surgery, and just uh, hope that you'll keep her in your prayers in these days ahead as well. And if you'll bow your heads, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day of worship. This is a day to celebrate you and to celebrate all the good that you have done for us. You have redeemed us. You have rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is our Savior and our Master. He is the one we listen to and we obey. We ask forgiveness for our sins today. We ask forgiveness for the ways that we've tried to run our own lives we ask forgiveness for when we knew the right thing to do and we didn't do it. And so we thank you today for your cleansing power. We thank you for not leaving us alone in our sin. We ask that you will be with us this week and help us to turn away from our sin and to seek after holy living inspired by your Holy Spirit inside of us. Help us to live for justice and mercy and kindness and help us to have peace and gratitude and joy filling our hearts. And in all things, may we be filled with love. Love for you, love for one another, and may that love be evident for the whole world to see. We ask that you will continue to lead us as we worship here today. Speak to us and teach us and fill us with your presence once again. That you may be glorified in us and through us this day and for the rest of our lives. We make this prayer in Jesus' name as we pray now together the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. At this time, we invite our ushers to come forward as we uh, give our tithes and offerings to the Lord in worship. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for all of your many blessings in our lives, and we give back to you with a grateful heart today, and we ask that you will use our gifts for your good service and your good kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
to come forward for the children's sermon and meet Miss Kathy up front.
Thank you to Barbara and Catherine and choir for leading us in our worship today. I also want to uh, thank uh, David and Richard for playing last week. They did a great job and they let me play with them and we had a lot of fun. We hope you enjoyed our uh, Bluegrass Hillbilly Sunday. It was, it was a lot of fun for us. So it is great to uh, see you here today on this Communion Sunday. The title of today's sermon is More Than Enough. If you have your Bibles, join me in uh, John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with the disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. And when he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him. For he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now, there was a great deal of grass in that place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. And when the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Well, here we have what is known as the feeding of the 5,000. And uh, 5,000 people in one place is a lot of people. It must have been Mother's Day today. Everybody was gathered up in one place. It was a big crowd to hear Jesus. And uh, this is one of the most famous miracles of Jesus. It's one that we all know. And it's still amazing to us even today. Of course, there are some people who still can't accept this story. You know, they, they say that, that miracles can't happen. Therefore, the feeding of the 5,000 isn't true. Well, I think this story is exactly what it claims to be, which is miraculous. And that means that not everybody can do it. We don't always see these kinds of things happening. If we did, then it wouldn't be a miracle. When I think of a uh, large crowd being fed, I think back to when I was serving in my first appointment and our church had a yearly homecoming service. It was a great day for the church. It was always packed. Family would come in from out of town. And the service, after it was finished, was a big gigantic meal on the grounds. And they would set up outside these, these long line of tables as far as the eye could see. And the tables would be filled, every inch of it, with good southern home cooking food. And it was glorious. And let me tell you, that was a day where nobody was in church to hear the preacher preach that day. Nobody cared about what I had to say. I didn't even care because I wanted to go get the food as well. I was looking forward to that. I think about that image of a large meal. And I wonder, what if all of that food that I would see on those tables, what if it was just made from a few small scraps? Like, say, a small amount of bread and a few fish. And then it multiplied into that gigantic feast. That would be miraculous. That would be unbelievable. Well, that's not too different from what happens in this story, is it? Something small turns into an abundant feast in the hands of Jesus Christ. The first thing we learn in this story is that Jesus is the one who was promised. Uh, there are people in Israel's history who cast a large shadow. Uh, there were names who were just more prominent than other names, and one of those names was Moses. Moses uh, figures prominently into Israel's story. He rescued them from slavery in Egypt and led them out, uh, giving them the Ten Commandments and the law, leading the people to the Promised Land. But Moses was not one to hog all the glory for himself. He knew that there was another who was coming. This person would be the, the ultimate prophet and leader and would be far greater than Moses ever was. Moses says this in Deuteronomy 18, 15. He said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people, and you shall heed such a prophet. 
This is the promise of, of someone like Moses, a true leader and king of God's people. Well, the people in our story today, they recognize and believe that Jesus is this person. When they see the miracle that he does, they realize that they are in the presence of someone truly special. This is the one they've been waiting for. This is the one who was promised. And if this is true, then at a minimum, Jesus is the ultimate prophet that Moses pointed towards. But if you combine that with the power of what Jesus does here, we realize that we are really in the presence of God himself. Think about this. Uh, what does Moses tell the people to do when they find that prophet? They said, you must heed such a prophet. You must listen to him. And that's a word for us today. We read this story about Jesus and his power, and we know what he's capable of doing. Are we going to listen to him? Are we going to let Jesus have say in our lives? Are we going to give him our attention? Are we going to give him room in our hearts? That is what we're called to do as Christian disciples. I heard about a husband and wife who were at a party uh, chatting with some of their friends when the subject of marital counseling came up. And the husband spoke up and he said, oh, we're never going to need that. We're never going to need marital counseling. My wife and I have a great relationship. And the friends seemed to be very impressed by this. And the husband continued on. He said, we won't need it because she was a communications major in college and I majored in theater. So that means that she can communicate really well and I act like I'm listening to her when she talks. Well, we don't need to act like we're listening to Jesus, do we? We don't need to put on the show. We need to really do it because Jesus is our Lord and our Christ and our King. We need to truly listen to him and devote our lives to him. We want to be discipled by Jesus instead of being discipled by the ways of this world. The next thing that we learn is that Jesus can use whatever we bring to him. Uh, we see that the origin of this great feast is not some well-to-do person with a lot of means at their disposal. They don't have any diplomas on their wall. There's no stock market portfolio. Who starts this great feast? It's a young boy, a kid. He doesn't have a lot to his name. He doesn't have a long track record of accomplishing great things. He's not a mover and shaker in the community who gets things done. He's a child. And kids don't have much to their name when it comes to accomplishments. Instead, they bring what they have. It's not much. It's not life-changing. It's not going to turn the world upside down. And I think we have a lot to learn from children when it comes to us approaching God. Here, this boy comes to Jesus unashamed, fully trusting, completely believing that Jesus can use what he has to offer. It may not be much, but in the hands of Jesus, it can expand astronomically. In that same way, Jesus can use whatever we bring to him as well. Jesus can use whatever we bring to him for his glory. We may not have much. We may not think that we can offer very much. But let's not be the judge of what God can and cannot use. There's a fascinating Christmas song out there. Maybe you've heard it. Uh, raise your hands if you've heard Little Drummer Boy. Anybody heard that song? There's a good number of you have heard that one. I found this song to be very divisive. The people who like it, like it. And the people who hate it, they really don't like it at all. Uh, but it does have this interesting idea of a boy who doesn't have much to give to Jesus, but he gives what he has. And in this case, he has a drum solo. Now, I'm not sure that's exactly what baby boy Jesus was looking for, but it's still something, right? Uh, the words say this, I am a poor boy too, and I have no gift to bring that's fit to give our king. Shall I play for you my drum? Now, we can take bets on if Mary and Joseph were thrilled about this extended drum solo from this little boy. Uh, they'd probably just gotten Jesus to sleep. You know how that is. And then all of a sudden this kid shows up and starts playing his drum. But this little boy gives what he had. Are we willing to offer what we have to Jesus? Are we willing to be used by him? Are we willing to fully give ourselves to Jesus? Even if it doesn't seem like very much. Let me challenge you, let God be the judge of that. Because what do you think Jesus can do with us when we offer ourselves to him? What can Jesus bring about because we were willing to share of ourselves, our gifts, our abilities, our means with him? I believe Jesus 
can do something amazing. I believe that he will do something amazing. So now I want to encourage you this week to pray and to let God know that you're willing to be used for his glory. And you can pray something like this. Say, God, I may not have much. I may not have much to offer, but I give you whatever I have. Use me. Use my abilities. Use whatever I have for your glory. That you may spread your good news through me and extend your love to the world. Finally, we learn here that Jesus can fully satisfy our needs. Jesus receives five loaves of bread and two fish from the boy. And even if every single person just took a a pinch of food that day, that would not be enough to feed 5,000 people. Even if some people passed and said, no, thank you, I don't want any, that would still not be enough food. What was needed was a miracle of God. And what happened was a miracle of God. There's so much left over that the disciples pick up the leftovers and there are 12 baskets full. Uh, If you think later on in John's gospel, Jesus will say these words, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus comes to give us what we need and even more than what we need. Jesus comes to give us life, to bring us hope, to bring forgiveness, to bring healing, to bring a fresh start into our lives. And he doesn't do it begrudgingly. He does it completely and totally out of love. You know, there are different places where we go looking for satisfaction in our lives. Uh, We are a people who are dissatisfied. We're lonely. We're bored. So we try to find satisfaction in money. Some try to find it in possessions. Or we go looking for it in relationships or food or drink. Some people try to find it popping pills or drinking copious amounts of booze. Some people try to find it in shopping or sports. Some people try to find it in politics. And y'all, none of that stuff is working out well for us when it comes to finding our true meaning and purpose in life. Author Jenny Owens tells a story about her brother, J.D., who when he was younger, he always lived by this motto, my life would be perfect if I could just have this one thing. Anybody ever lived that way before? And for him, it was getting his first car. Uh, She said that he finally turned 16 years old and got his driver's license. And he inherited his mom's old Ford Taurus. And this was it. He finally had his car. But then he thought, this car would really be complete if I had a great stereo system to go in here. So he got his great stereo system and speakers for his car. But the car was so old that the volume made every piece of the car rattle and hum and buzz along the way. So now he decided what his car needed next was to have brand new tires and brand new shiny rims on the car. And then that would do it. So he did this and before long the speakers were continuing to drive him crazy. And the rims were going out of style. They were not the cool ones to have anymore. After this, J.D. began to have his eye on a different car, a truck that he had seen down at the used car dealership. And he begged his parents for this truck. This was it. This was the one. Eventually, they gave in and got it for him. And for an instant, all was well in J.D.'s life. But that used truck was pretty old, actually, and it had little life left in it. And the love affair soon ended when the truck died for good. And then J.D. had to return to driving that old Ford Taurus with big tires, worn-out rims, ratty speakers, longing for a better ride in the days ahead. Isn't that what we all do, folks? We all go chasing after this stuff that we think is going to bring us full satisfaction, and then when we don't find it there, we go looking in another place. We're always looking for that greener grass, and somehow when we get there, we find that that grass is never quite green enough. How about we look to Jesus to satisfy our needs? How about we look to Jesus to bring about true and abundant life? I'm afraid that too often we're looking in the wrong places, we're chasing after the wrong things, and we keep on getting hurt by those things because they keep falling short of what they promise. They never deliver. Only Jesus can bring us what we need the most. Only Jesus can truly deliver on his promises. Only Jesus can fully satisfy our very souls. So as we close this morning and we head into communion, I want to challenge us all to to return to Jesus today. As the prophet Isaiah says, Seek the Lord 
while he may be found, and call upon him while he is near, for he will abundantly pardon. Jesus is the one that Moses pointed to so long ago. He is the Christ, he is the Lord, and he alone can save us from our sins and bring us to new life. He can use whatever we have to offer him. He will take it, he will bless it, and he will multiply it for God's kingdom. And we will find that he is more than enough. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we move into our service of Holy Communion, you can uh, follow along in the liturgy on the screens, or you can also turn in your hymnal to page 12, and we invite you to do that. Hear this invitation, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And glory to God. Amen. And if you'll join me on page 13 for the prayer of the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven... We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. In just a few moments, I invite you to follow the direction of the ushers. Uh, The choir will come first, and we'll follow along after them. Uh, But this is the place to, to receive God's love all over again. As you come down for communion, know that God loves you, know that God cares for you, and that God wants a relationship with you. Come, and let's celebrate together.
rise now and go in peace. And may the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen. now and go in peace and may the peace that passes all understanding go with you amen Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Arise now and find new life in Jesus Christ. Amen.
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Arise now and feast on him in your hearts with thanksgiving. Amen. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Arise now and may your life be a beacon for others to follow. Amen. now in peace with hearts filled with hope, the hope of Jesus. Amen.
Arise now filled with the love of God, both now and forever. Amen. fourth verses. mothers out there. We hope that you have a great rest of your Mother's Day. We are so grateful for you. And as we all leave this place, may we remember that Jesus Christ is more than enough. He is. Let him have your life. Let him have your everything and become the person that he wants you to be. Go now in peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Come behind you. Guys, good job. Way to go. 